Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium. And today we're gonna to talk more about connector pinouts and routing through your connector over to another board. Now, sometimes a question that comes up is whether or not you should route an earth connection or a chassis connection over your connector pinout and through like a ribbon cable or even an ethernet cable or some other kind of shielded cable. So this is one of those sensitive things where the answer really is, it depends. So let's get started and take a look. I wanna consider a really simple case of how we're gonna draw a connection between two different boards and which signals we might need to connect. Typically, in this case where you need to connect two boards like this, um, the question always comes up, do I need to route my ground from one board over to the other board? It all really depends. Sometimes you have a case where board one is powering board two. So there really is no input power on board two, except whatever is delivered from board one. And so in that case, you have to route a ground connection between the two because you need to create a cons uh, complete loop for any current that you bring into board two that needs to return back into board one. Okay, now it should make total sense. However, there is also a case where maybe board two receives its own power and then you don't have to actually route in power from board number one. So we don't need to worry about this. Still, there's the question of, do I need to actually route my ground between board one over to board two? So let's look at a little case here where I have board two in its own enclosure and we have power coming in. And let's just assume for a moment that this is three wire DC. So there's a protective earth connection. And then same thing over here, okay? So I've got my chassis grounded and I have my two boards here and I know that I need to draw a connection between them to carry my signals over a cable. So now the question is, should I carry ground with it? Should I also essentially include a connection between ground plane number one and ground plane number two. This relates to how we define ground in electronics. And when I say how we define ground, what I mean is how we actually define zero volts on one board versus another board. So typically the two uh, copper layers that you have for ground on two different boards, they may not be at the same potential. And so what I mean by that is if I were to take a multimeter and this board is powered up, this board is powered up, I measure the potential difference between these two planes, I might not measure zero volts. I could actually measure a very small voltage. Now that very small voltage can then force some current to move in one direction or the other between these two systems. This is really problematic if instead of bridging the two copper layers, you actually decide I'm gonna bridge the two earth layers. Because if the two earth connections are now bridged, that can be very problematic because you don't want a bunch of current flowing through these different enclosures. It can electrocute the user at really high current. Um, generally, earth, uh, protective earth is not meant to be a current carrying conductor. It's a protective connection just in case you do have an ESD event or some other event where you then have to dump a bunch of current into the enclosure to protect the rest of your electronics. So uh, the key here is whether or not we should make this connection based on whether or not the potentials that we measure between these two ground planes are going to be the same or different. Typically, if this, these two devices are, they're connected to the same circuit and they both essentially have the same earth connection back somewhere else in the wall or, or at a, a utility cabinet, um, you don't need to worry about it as long as you're at low current or as long as you're operating at low power. You might carry some current that bridges here uh, between these two connections. It's gonna be low enough that it's not really a safety issue. It could be a noise issue if you're dealing with analog components on either of these boards and there's some noise moving through the ground plane, that could actually interfere with your readout of any analog signal that's moving on these different boards. And that's where you have a problem where the analog signal you would like to detect is now gonna have some noise on it because you've just created a nice big ground loop. So this actually relates to one of the reasons that we like to use, instead of using uh, single-ended signals, we actually like to use differential signals. Differential signals can be routed over these connections without requiring this ground connection going between them. So one of the motivations for using differential signaling in the first place 
was an understanding that when I measure the voltage carried by a differential signal, when I measure it over here, it actually doesn't depend on what the ground potential is. So the difference between these two ground potentials could actually be very large. But if I send in a, let's say a three volt uh, differential signal from, uh, from this board, it'll always be read out as a three volt differential signal on this other board. So you don't need to make this connection between these two. As you increase the size of the connection, meaning like the physical distance that you have to route over, and as you increase the separation between these two boards, so they're now running on totally different circuits, there is the danger that if you route, say a ground connection or a PE connection over this very long cable, you now can actually get a very large potential difference between these two boards. So that potential difference could be like a dozen volts, let's say. So that could actually be very large. And that's large enough to where if you have a ribbon cable or you have a shielded ethernet cable and you're using that to bridge these two ground regions, the current that you can get through this short circuit can actually be very large. So remember, let's say we have these two ground planes and they're on totally different circuits and they're separated by a long distance. And I've got this long cable running between them. With this ground connection, if these two planes are at different potentials, let's say it's a 10 volt potential. If you have this big uh, distance between them at 10 volts and you short circuit these planes, you now just short circuited 10 volts. So now you've got a lot of current that's gonna flow backwards through here in this case. Created the nice big short circuit. So there's a uh, client of mine who works in the industrial space and he has dealt with this specific issue in the past when trying to route a connector, or uh, sorry, a uh, conductor between two different boards that are in different enclosures and having a situation where once this shielded cable reaches the other board, it essentially creates this big short circuit and causes the shielding to totally fry. So you've got a big safety issue here if you try and connect the ground planes like this over a connector. You should make sure that whatever voltage difference between these two planes is really minimized. Um, that can be really difficult when you're operating it over really big distances. And I've seen comments from some other uh, more experienced designers than, than me who have said uh, similar comments that they can measure very large voltages between these two different systems when they're separated by a long distance. So when I say long distance, we're not talking like, you know, miles or anything. It could be a large distance as in the two boards aren't in the same room, but they need to be bridged with or connected with a very long cable. We've talked a lot about this so far. Generally, you should not try and do this type of bridging when the two different boards have these different power inputs on, even if they're on the same circuit, it's probably not a good idea. However, if board number two is receiving power from board number one, now we don't really have this problem where this board is gonna be at a necessarily higher or lower potential than this board. You're grounding this out. So you're, def you're defining this potential here to be at the same as this potential up here for this ground plane. So in that case, it's totally fine. And that matches up with some of the situations that we showed in the previous video, where we put ground on the pinout. So be mindful of that the next time you need to make a connection between uh, two different boards and make sure that you don't muddle your terminology because the terminology around different types of grounds, whether it's analog ground, digital ground, signal ground, uh, PE, like I mentioned before, so protective earth, or just earth, and then there's even frame ground. I mean, there's so many different you know types of grounds. Just be careful with your terminology when you're talking about this. What I mean here with GND is this connection here from this board over to this board, and not necessarily a connection here from here all the way through over to this enclosure. Okay, everybody, so I know I've talked a lot about grounding with cables and everything. Hopefully this helps clear up why the difference between GND ground and PE ground is so important. They are physically not the same thing. They physically can be at different voltages. And this is something you need, to, you need to be mindful of when routing power into your system, as well as trying to make a connection between two different systems. So I know this is a more advanced topic and it relates to connector pinouts. It relates to defining ground in your PCB stack up. It relates to making connections to your enclosure. And if you want a PCB design application that can handle all of those different requirements, go take a look at Altium Designer. There's a link where you can go in the description to download a free trial of Altium Designer. Go give it a shot. Okay, thanks everybody for watching. Give this video a like, hit that subscribe button, help us hack the YouTube algorithm, 
and leave your comments and questions in the comment section. We'd love to get your questions and we'll try and get to all of them, but to be honest, we get a lot of stuff, so we can only get to so many questions. If you wanna ask me something directly, totally fine, leave it in the comments. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator.